Baptist Church of Glenard, where we're developing dynamic disciples. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm Minister Alan C. Andrews, and I'm going to be your presider for this morning, for this service today. I want to welcome our First Baptist Church family all of our guests, and everyone who is viewing us around the country and around this world. Good morning, good morning. We would like to know where you are watching from. So if you could text in the chat where you're watching from, whether it's from Miami, from Upper Marlboro, from Southeast, or or from the Ukraine, we are so, so excited to see you. Please, we would love for you to share this link with your loved ones and with your family as well. Amen? Amen. Good morning, family. Let's take a moment and spend some time in praise and worship. And wake up this Sunday morning. God has still been very good to us. He's still our great and amazing God. And he still deserves a great and amazing praise. You ready? Come on. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim
Hallelujah. When I call your name, hallelujah. We praise God that we can call on his name and he will answer. Amen. Our scripture for this morning is coming out of the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. That's the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Verses 1 through 3, and this is how it reads. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, 
and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Amen. Now, what we're going to do now is take a look at the wonderful things that are happening at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden through the FBCG News. Amen. This is FBCG News for the week of August 30th. Your source for the latest news and information at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, where we're developing dynamic disciples. Hey, Grace Girls, it's that time of year again. This pandemic was not going to stop the party. This year, we're taking it virtual. Join us for our annual Brunch and Blush Grace Girls Gathering. Whether you're brunching by yourself or getting together for a brunch watch party with a few of your relentless girlfriends, we can't wait for you to join us. We look forward to strengthening our relationship with Christ and bonding with one another. So decorate your table, put on your tea attire, and join us Saturday, September 5th at 10 a.m. For information and to register, please visit fbcglenarden.org slash brunch in blush. The COVID-19 pandemic took everyone by surprise. However, it also presented new opportunities for entrepreneurs. The FBCG Singles Ministry is hosting a business hot seat Saturday, September 5th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. Three new entrepreneurs will have the opportunity to showcase their businesses, discuss how they're making the best out of this pandemic, and will receive critical feedback from industry experts to help ensure their success. Get ideas, get inspired, and join us on Saturday on the FBCG website or on Facebook Live. FBCG is fully committed to providing academic programs that ensure personal Christian growth. The institutes provide solid biblical foundations for you to have an effective ministry and true kingdom impact. Online registration is available now through Tuesday, September 8th. The virtual fall session begins Sunday, September 13th. Take advantage of classes that will help you become rooted in Christ in all areas of life, like foundational principles for believers. This course will cover the basic foundation truths for all believers in Jesus Christ as outlined in Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. Topics covered include faith, baptisms, resurrection, and eternal life. Minister's class prepares students for practical aspects of ministry, required personal discipline, and overall knowledge of ministerial responsibilities. Visit fbcglenarden.org slash the institutes to register. Books can be purchased at fbcgbookstore.org. Ladies, in what areas of your life do you need to be relentless? Our He Loves Me Women's Conference offers master classes that will help you learn how to be relentless in a specific life area through focused Bible-based study. Hear from dynamic guest speakers on topics such as relentlessly developing dynamic relationships, evangelism in the new normal, be a relentless financial warrior, leadership, innovation, and entrepreneurship, relentless wives, relentless healing, relentless focus to embrace the gift of singleness, and relentless mamas. This year's masterclasses are accompanied by on-demand training modules that will allow you to take in the information at your own pace. These are difficult days that we're in, and now more than ever, you need to be relentlessly pursuing God because He is the one who will see you through. If you're ready to become relentless, make plans to join us online October 2nd and 3rd for He Loves Me 2020. To register, visit fbcglenarden.org slash he loves me. That's the news for this week. You can find more details about these and other events at fbcglenarden.org. Amen, amen. We're so excited about all the things that are happening here at our church, the things that were shown to you through the news today, and we're just excited for what God is going to do through all those different vehicles. Amen. Now, First Baptist, we are so excited about how you have been such wonderful, obedient, faithful givers. And we want to just thank you once again for your giving. 
We also see you, all those people who are out there via chat. We see you from South Carolina. We see you from West Virginia. We see you from Dubai. Praise the Lord. We see you from Upper Marlboro. And we are so excited that you have taken your time to come and join us this morning. Now, one of the things that is very, very important, again, is for us to be givers. For the word of God said it is better to give than to receive. Amen. Amen. Now, if you reference our website, there is a button there that says give. If you go on the site at First Baptist FBCG Glenarden.org, you can reference the button that says giving and just what says give, I'm sorry, and just press that and we can go from there. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we love you and we praise you. We magnify your name. We thank you for just who you are, for your grace and for your mercy. You are awesome and magnificent and you have covered us through these difficult times. And we are so thankful for that. Father, we just ask that right now that you would bless this offering that's coming forth. We thank you for the opportunity. We thank you for the resources that you have provided for us to offer. And Lord, we just thank you again for your covering, your blessing, and everything that you have done for us. And it's in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, that we pray and give thanks. Amen. Now, after this song, the next person that you will hear will be our senior pastor of First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, Pastor John K. Jenkins, Sr. Amen. Family, as you're giving, let's worship God together. With all that's going on, it's easy to lose sight of the fact that our God is still great. But the truth is, the fact that you're still here to watch this, that you see it, that God has been keeping you and providing for you and making way out the way is evidence of his greatness. That this pandemic, as crazy as it may seem, is still not more powerful than our God. But our God is still the greatest thing that ever happened to us. Can I just help me worship God for a moment? He's still the greatest thing that ever happened. Even in your homes, if you can just worship him, he's still the greatest thing that ever happened to us. And so we lift him and we magnify him. And we give him glory and honor. And we give him glory and honor. Come on, I know you're at home, but can you still worship him? Can you still lift him up for a moment? He deserves the great praise. He deserves our worship. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You deserve the glory and the honor. I lift my hands in worship and I bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. I lift my hands in worship and I bless your holy name. Say it with me, say it. You deserve the glory and the honor. Come on, let's demonstrate it. I lift my hands in worship. And I bless your holy.
Every chance I get. Every chance I get. Every chance I get. I worship Him. Help me say it. Yeah. leading us to the throne of God. Thank you all this morning. It's tremendous. I feel the presence of God this this hour, this day, this time. I'm grateful. Thank you for joining us wherever you are joining us from around the world. I'm thankful for your presence. Grateful that you're with us here today. and pray that God would minister life to you and give you hope and answers today. As we prepare to dive into the word of God, I pray that it is an encouragement to you, that it speaks to your heart. And uh, we pray and thank God for your presence and for your uh, joining us wherever you are today. I want to just real quick before we pray, I want to mention uh, two things. First of all, you saw in our announcements about the Institute. So we have so many classes and so many opportunities for uh, you to develop yourself and be the best that God wants you to be. And so we want to encourage you. And you know, in, in, in our normal environment, you, we only have so many seats in the class. And we were limited in how many students we could take. But because of this pandemic, one of the benefits that's come out, we can now uh, let you stream our uh, classes. And uh, I, th- I believe the classes are unlimited. So I don't think there's a limit to that. So, um, I want to encourage you to join the class. Secondly, I want to highlight something that we, sh- we didn't have any announcements that we should have, that tonight at 6.30, at our 6.30 service this evening, uh, is a young adult service. They, they, we, we got some young adults here today. Who, uh, matter of fact, this is, the young adult, is this the young adult praise team? God bless y'all. I'm proud of y'all this morning. Um, they're going to be in charge of the service tonight. They're, they've uh, they they got it all planned out. They're gonna show us old folk how to do church. So uh, I'm excited. So join us tonight at six thirty right here. Uh, however you're watching us uh, through um, YouTube or through our website or through Face FaceTime Face Facebook. You know I can never get these things together. Facebook. We want you to join us tonight, and uh, we have a guest preacher. One of my sons is going to be preaching tonight. One of my spiritual sons. Uh, Dr. Bobby Manning, and he's going to be a blessing to you tonight as well. 
Well, it's time to pray. We haven't stopped praying. We don't stop praying. We're still praying for souls to accept Jesus, people who have become confused and lost. And if our country ever needed prayer and Jesus to step in, right now is that time. So we want you to just take a moment and call out the name of people that you know need Jesus in their life. Call their name out. Ask God to uh, turn their life around, turn their heart around. And we want to believe God to do a supernatural thing in their lives. So let's, let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to your excellent name. How marvelous are your ways. How excellent is your glory, Father. Thank you so much for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Thank you for being a miracle worker. Thank you for being a God that solves and answers our prayer. Thank you, God, for salvation and deliverance and healing and breakthroughs and miracles. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you've done, that you saved us and reclaimed us for your kingdom. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that you have brought us out of darkness into your marvelous light. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Your name is marvelous and wonderful and excellent. How excellent is your name. And we give you the praise and glory. As we come before you today, Father, we are praying for your will to be done in our lives. We're praying that your kingdom would come, your will would be done every day in our lives right here on earth. We're praying that that which you've decreed would become a reality. We're praying for lost souls and unsaved people. We're praying for backsliders who've strayed away from you. We're interceding and praying, God, that your Holy Spirit would arrest people where they are and bring them to you, Father, into a loving, living relationship with you. We're praying for our sons and daughters, our mothers and our fathers, our friends and our relatives, our co-workers and our cousins, baby and them. We're praying for everybody, God, to get their life right with you. We come confessing and acknowledging our iniquities and our sins and our failures. We know that we've sinned, that we've missed the mark. And we pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that you would step into our domain and let your perfect will prevail. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father, put a shield around us today. Put a shield around this place, around this word. We pray that you would speak life, deliverance, and healing in the magnificent and marvelous name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that you would anoint us to be your mouthpiece, your conduit, and let your name get the glory and the honor in the significant name of the resurrected Savior, Jesus the Christ. We make no apologies about calling out his name. We pray in his name. We stand in his name. We live in his name. We preach in his name. We pray, Father, that your will will be done saints would be edified strengthened let us be your mouthpiece for these next few moments let your name get the glory and honor in jesus name and everybody said amen amen and amen praise the lord god bless you amen thank the lord for that all right i want to invite your attention tonight today whatever time it is wherever you are i'd lose track of whatever time it is it's morning right now actually uh this is live coming from the first baptist church of glen arden uh, Hebrews chapter 12, I want to read to you. Hebrews 12, I want to read these first three verses of the 12th chapter of Hebrews. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Wow, what a profound passage. I want to hang a title on this message of keep saying, keep running, keep running. That's what I want to say to you. Keep running. I wanted to, that's what I want to talk about today. I I faced a challenging situation in my life this week. Uh, I faced a challenge that made me 
want to seriously quit something I was engaged in, something that I had uh, embarked upon, but I got so frustrated. I had reached a point of frustration that in my mind I said, I'm done. As a matter of fact, I not only said it in my mind, I voiced it out loud. I said, I'm done. I'm over it. I can't, I can't do this anymore. I thought about a million reasons why to just walk away, quit, forget about it, let it go. I thought about it, a, a zillion different reasons why I didn't really need this. It wasn't necessary for my life. It wasn't anything I absolutely had to do. And so I, I thought about quitting. It recalled when I went through that moment, when I felt that way, I, I, I did go back in my mind to an experience and a journey I had several, several, several years ago, uh, 30 plus years ago. I was watching people run and I had decided that I was going to be a runner too. I, I didn't know what, what was so joyful about running to see people running all the time, run, running in the heat, running in the cold and the snow and the rain. I decided to give running a try myself. Went out and bought me some shoes and some running clothes, and I decided to run. And I got out on the, the track to run, and when I realized how long a mile was, I almost quit before I got started. But I determined that uh, I could do this. I said to myself, I can do this. No matter how difficult or frustrated it might be, I said to myself, I, I, I can get it done. Uh, but when I got on the track and started running, there's several things that be quickly became apparent to me. It became apparent to me that there were other people on the track who were running much faster than me. I also noticed that some of those people were passing me and made it around the lap again, around the track again, and passed me again. And so I, I thought to myself as I looked at these people running faster and quicker and uh, they, they just, they didn't seem to get wearied and tired. I, I ran a half a mile and I had to walk a while and then I'd run again and then I had to walk a, uh, uh, again for a little bit. Uh, I, I, I just got frustrated and I stopped running. My running career did not last long. I paid for those shoes and those running clothes and I didn't, I didn't keep them long. I thought about that when I faced my crisis this week of running. I'm sorry, this crisis of what I was doing this week, it was actually dealing with something that I have a passion for, something that I want to do. Uh, I thought about my running days. And I said, well, I think I'm going to quit. And I wanted to talk to you today about it because... I know and I, I felt the Spirit of God use that instance to say to me that there are people you are ministering to, to, to who are frustrated with something, something in their life, something that they're doing, something that they're engaged in. There are people who are frustrated and they want to quit. And I want you to tell them, John Jenkins, don't quit. I want you to tell them to keep running. And so that's why I've come today, because while I thought about it and contemplated walking away from what I was doing, the thing that I loved and I'm passionate about, flying, that's what it was. It was about flying. When I thought about it as a pilot, I know I had to do this recurrent training every, every year. I got to go back and get trained. And the trainers try to put you through scenarios and frustrate you, and they were successful. But when you're flying, you can't get frustrated. You got to fly the plane. You can't, you can't decide I'm going to quit. You can't just get out of the plane when it's in the air and say I'm done. No, you can't. You got to figure out how to land this thing. But I got frustrated. And God said to me, I want you to talk to the people to whom you have responsibility of ministering to. And I want you to say to them and tell them, don't quit. But to keep running. I want you to tell them. I want you to preach it. I want you to declare it. Because some of you today are frustrated. Frustrated with your job. Frustrated with your ministry. Frustrated going to school. Frustrated with your marriage. Frustrated with reaching your goals. Frustrated with your hobby. There's something that you're frustrated with. Frustrated with raising your kids. Frustrated with buying a house. Frustrated frustrated with getting your finances together. You're, something in life has frustrated you. And the Spirit of God told me to tell you, keep running, keep going. Don't stop. As a matter of fact, I, I think as I look at this passage today, the writer of the book of Hebrews is also speaking to 
to you. I thought I ought to talk about it. This passage here was refreshed in my mind. And I thought I ought to spend some time talking to you about it today. I want to talk to you today because this writer, matter of fact, let let me let the Hebrew writer talk to you today. We don't know his name. He never tells us who it is. He never identifies himself. But what he does do is identify who he's talking to. He's, He's ministering and he's written his whole book of Hebrews. He has written to some Christians. Matter of fact, they, they are Jewish Christians. They are Jews who have converted to Christianity. They have, they have accepted Jesus in their life. They have, they have embraced the faith in Christ and they have hit a bump in the road and they become frustrated. They're bothered. They are, they are frustrated with their journey and they are contemplating returning to their Jewish religion. The book of Hebrews is a whole book written. All of the chapters, every passage is written to speak to some people who have contemplated and wrestled with and thought about quitting. And so he he gives us some points. I want to give you four, four words today, four words that I hope will help you in the midst of your frustration and in the midst of your challenging moments in the midst of what you're going through whatever you whatever it is just hear me out that's all i'm asking you to do before you quit before you write that letter before you turn turn it in before you walk away hear me out here's the writer telling them this writer from hebrews who encouraged me when i felt he encouraged me here's what he says let me look let me let me read this verse number one listen several things in verse number one here's what he says therefore Also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. There's the first thing right there. He says, we are surrounded by a great cloud. Not just a cloud, but a great cloud of witnesses. We are are surrounded by so great, not even great, but so great, they're witnesses. We got witnesses. There's my first word, my first point. I got four words for you today. We have witnesses. He's saying, I've got some people who have walked the journey, who've gone through the challenges of life, and they've survived, and they've made it, and they pressed through. I've got some people who have gone through stuff. He said, here's what he's saying. Some of them, you... They didn't have what you have. They didn't have the spirit of God. They didn't have a written text to read, to go back and be encouraged. They didn't, some of them didn't have any of that. Some of them didn't have uh, examples to look back and say, they encouraged me to go forward. He says, we have witnesses. Therefore, wait a minute. Therefore, we also, since we have such a great cloud, therefore, when you see therefore, you got to ask what it's there for. Therefore, it's saying, What I'm about to say is tied to what I've just said. Here's what he's saying. You got a great cloud of witnesses. And in chapter 11, just the chapter before chapter 12. Go ahead, Pastor. You're so deep today. He gives us a list of witnesses. He goes through and mentions some people who have have journeyed and walked with God and had experience with God. And they are, in fact, our witnesses. They They are in the grandstand of glory, having completed their journey, and they're cheering us on. They are witnesses to tell us to keep on running. They're in the stands of glory. They have lived their life, finished their course, and they're in the grandstand of heaven cheering us on. And the writer says they are a, he said they're not just a cloud of witnesses. They are a a great cloud, so great a cloud. Incredible people. He talks about Abel who offered up up to God a more excellent sacrifice. He talks about Enoch, Enoch, who walked with God. Enoch walked with God and was no more because God took him away because of his walk with him. He's an example. Noah built an ark, and nobody wanted to hear what he had to say, but yet he built that ark and preached the sermon that he preached for the distance of time, 120 years, and yet uh, he built the ark and Even in the midst of him building the ark, nobody listened to him, but he built the ark and saved mankind. He's he's a witness. Abraham obeyed God and went to an unknown place, left the comfort of where he lived to go to another location and to another place. He went to another place, not knowing where he was going, just to be obedient to God. Sarah had a child well past her childbearing age. She believed God even though she was past 
the age and time of having children, but yet she believed God and gave birth to a child. Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. Jacob blessed Joseph's sons. These are people who walked. Moses chose to live with the afflictions of life rather than live in the prosperity of the Egyptians. Here, here are people who, who, because of their belief and walk with God, lived an extraordinary life trusting God. They had challenges and moments, but they didn't quit, but they held on and held fast and kept going. They're witnesses for us. They're in the grandstand cheering you on. As a matter of fact, Joshua and the children of Israel walked around the walls of Jericho till they came down. Rahab received the spies. All of these people made choices and decisions. Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel. All of these people mentioned, all of these people mentioned in chapter 11. People who went through the journey of life and went through the challenges of life and didn't quit. While I sat down in this training session of pilot learning how to fly, uh, well, developing my flying and re- getting this recurrent training while I'm flying and I felt so frustrated because I couldn't get it right. Sitting next to me was my flight instructor who when I said I'm done, I can't do it no more, sitting next to me was a witness who has already gone through the training. Ooh, y'all not hear what I'm saying. Already completed the task, already got the certificate, has done it himself before, who leaned over to me and said, don't stop, John, keep going, you can do it. He cheered me on. He was a witness right there sitting next to me. He said, come on, we can do this thing. And sure enough, I kept going and got it. I got it done. I got it completed. I got it finished. I, I kept going because I had a witness. We've got the witness of Scripture, and this is why church is important. You need to have people around you who, when you're going through frustrating times, can cheer you on. I know people say you don't need the church. I know people say you don't need to go to the church. You can be at home by yourself. No, you need the church because you will reach the season and time and moments of frustration, and you're going to need somebody to cheer you on. My flight instructor said, you can do this. And I kept the faith, and I kept going, and I completed the journey, landed the plane, in a simulator, by the way, not in a real plane, a simulator. (sighs) I'm so glad I kept going. I'm so glad because at the end of the class, they gave me a certificate with my name on it that I had completed the course. If you keep going, there's something waiting for you on the end. You know, one of the reasons I stopped running 30 years ago, it's because I didn't have anybody to cheer me on. I was out there running by myself. I was out there running with nobody who cared or was concerned about whether I kept going or not. Nobody. Everybody was doing their own thing. Everybody was doing their own thing. But if I had some witnesses there, if I had some people there, to cheer me on, I probably would have kept on running. And I'm saying to you today, you need to be surrounded. You, you are surrounded by witnesses. Even if you don't have physical people in your life, we've got the spiritual testimony of chapter 11 of Hebrews. But that's not the only thing he says. That we, We've got this testimony of these amazing people who walked with God and finished their course, held on to their faith, and kept going. But not only that, here's the second thing he says right here in chapter in chapter. Uh, Uh, 12 of Hebrews, he says, let us, verse 1, lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. You see that right in the middle of the verse, right in the middle of the verse. He says, let us lay aside every weight. Here's my second word is weights. You got to let the weights down. You got to, you got to release the weights. You can't run with weights. You can't travel and get the accomplishments done while you're weighed down. Some of you got some weights in your life. Weights and sins. You got weights and sins. He says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin. Which tells me when it says weights and sins and the sin, is that a weight may not be a sin. Matter of fact, it probably isn't a sin. It's, it might even be something good. A weight. But it's it's, it's not good for you. <laughs> and it's not good for you at this juncture and season of your life. It's slowing you down. When you engaged in the race, you got to let the weights go. 
They might be good for training. They might be good to prepare you for the race. But when you're in the race, you got to lay it aside. And I think that's a, a significant point that there's some things you can't hold on to. There's some things you got to push it to the side. You don't run a race with the race, with the weights. You lay it aside. Don't hold on to it. Put it to the curb. It may be a good thing or it may be a bad thing. I don't know what it is. Whatever your weights are, this writer says to you and I, lay it aside. Get rid of it. Don't hold on to it. And the sin which easily ensnares us, it says, the sin that captures your attention, the thing that captures your call, that calls you out. Everybody got something that tempts you. Don't you act like you ain't never tempted by sin. Everybody in here got something that if, it, if, if given the right circumstance and situation, you might look at it a little bit longer than you should. You might, you might engage. You might talk to it. You might email it, FaceTime it. You might Skype it. You might, you might do something with it that you ought not be doing. That devil will bring something your way that easily ensnares you. And the text says, let us lay aside every way and the sin that so easily, so quickly captures your attention, that easily ensnares us. That's what he says. It's important and significant that you figure out and you know what your thing, you know what your thing is. You know what your thing is. You know what you are attracted to. You know what captures your attention. You know what calls your name out. You know. And he says, Lay it aside. You want to finish the course? You want to win the race? You want to be everything that God has called you to do? You want to fulfill your purpose? You want to reach your destiny? You want to accomplish what it is God has called you to accomplish? You need to identify what that is that easily ensnares you and stay away. Don't play with it. Don't mess with it. Don't tweet it. Don't FaceTime it. Don't call it. Don't email it. Don't tweet it. Don't don't do anything. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Figure out if you're serious about your walk with God and serious about your destiny and serious about fulfilling your purpose, let it alone. Lay it aside. That's what he said. Lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us. But there's a third thing he says. It's right here in verse, it's still in verse number one. He says, and let us run with endurance. It's the latter part of this verse. Let us run with endurance. The race that is set before us. I wish I had a W for this one, but I don't. My first two were W's when I talked about witnesses and weights, but I don't have a W for this one. This was just run. You got to run. You got to get into the battle, get into your assignment and run. Run, engage. This word run, it's not a walk. If, if, if the word meant walk, I would have used walk because the walk would have been another W. But I looked up the word carefully to see what it meant. It don't mean walk. It means that you, in fact, uh, it's, not, it's not even a jog. This, this word run means that you have extended energy. You, you are putting forth energies. You are, you are, Going forward with exertion. You, 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 are, you are pushing it and pressing it. That's what this word run means. You're running hard. You're going at it hard. That's what it means. You ain't lollygagging. You ain't skipping. You're running. Some of you are skipping. You're walking. You're strolling along. This ain't a stroll. He says you got to run with patience, with endurance. Run with the mindset that I'm going to keep going no matter what. That's what endurance means. I, I'm going to run and go fast and go hard for as long as I can. That's what this run with endurance means. King James says run with patience. Says, I'm, I'm running with a mindset to go to see what the end's going to be. I, I, I get frustrated when I see people who don't have a mindset to say, I got to press my way. And I'm telling you today, you got to press your way through criticism, through being lied on, being talked about. You got to press your way through rejection, through misunderstandings, through whatever it is you got to go through. Press your way on. You got to go. He said, let us run with patience. And listen to this. Let us run with patience the race that has been set before you. 
Run your race. Don't worry about running somebody else's race or doing something somebody else did. Or See, our big mistake is we compare ourselves with other people. I got frustrated with my, my, job, my running career because I was looking at all the other people. And I couldn't keep up with them. And I couldn't run as fast as them. And I couldn't go as long as them. And I got frustrated because I compared myself with them. Here's a big problem in the Christian church. People are always comparing themselves to other people. You can't compare yourself to anybody else. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. God didn't call you to run somebody else's race. This text says run the race that has been set before you. You run your own race. You do the things of what God has called you to do. You, you, you reach the assignment that Christ has put before you. What, did he, what, did he, what gifts did he give you? What talents did he give you? What assignment did he give you? What did he call you to do? Let us run with patience, with exertion, with heart. Do it hard. Run with patience, with endurance. The race that is set before you, run what God has put in front of you. You're going to get in trouble when you try to compare yourself to other people. You're going to miss out. You're going to miss the mark. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to fail comparing yourself to others. And this, this is a trick of the devil because the devil always wants you to compare yourself to others. And you'll call, call somebody else's situation to mind to you and say, see, this is what they did. You ain't doing that. That's what the devil does. That's the voice of the devil. Don't listen to that voice that causes you to think smaller of yourself when you compare yourself to others. Comparison is not a spiritual gift. God did not call you to compare yourself to others. What he's called you to do is to just do what it is he's assigned to your hands to do. Let me close this message. That is, if they ain't ministering to you, I'm ministering to me. I told you that they're witnesses. I told you not only are there witnesses, but there are weights to get rid of. I told you to run. Here's number four. I call it watch. Go ahead, Pastor. Watch. Watch. Look. Look at verse two. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Look to him. If you want to compare yourself to somebody, look to him. Put your eyes on what he did. And follow in his footsteps. Watch. Watch how he endured. Watch how he went through it. Watch how he, he's the, he is the author and finisher. He, he started it and he finishes it. Watch, uh, watch him, how he endured all that he endured. Matter of fact, here's what the text says. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Because of the joy that was set before him. See, see, here's, here's what you got to learn. Here's what you got to get. He was able to endure all that he went through, being crucified, being whipped, being a crown of thorns on his head, having, uh, being pierced in his side and nailed in his hands and feet and, and having uh, the sins of eternity of the world put on him. He endured the cross. Hating the shame that he had to go through. He hated it, despising the shame. Why did he do it? Because of the joy that was set before him. Because he knew when it's all said and done, he would be seated at the right hand of the Father. He knew that though he died on the cross, that God was going to raise him up out of the grave. He knew that regardless of what he was presently going through, it wasn't going to last long. I'm preaching to somebody here right now. What you're going through will not last long. You're coming up out of there. God's going to bring you through. It's tough. You're crying tears today, but you're coming up out of there. You're frustrated now. It's not going the way you want it. You wish you had another way to go through it, but you're coming out of there. And, and, and remember the joy in front of you. My wife has had six kids. Six. She's gone through the pain of bearing children six times. Six times she had those labor pains. Six times. Six times she's gone through it. Six times. Somebody said, why would she keep doing that? <laughs> because of the joy of holding that bundle of a baby in her arms. The joy that it brought to her and has brought to her. She got joy. When she had that, that baby in her arms, 
all the pain she went through meant nothing to the joy of giving life to a human being and taking care of that baby, to see that baby smile and laugh and grow up. The joy that was set before him, the momentary pain can't compare with the lifelong joy we've had with these six kids. What you're going through today is light and minor compared to the joy that it shall bring to you. And so, the, so the writer says, watch Jesus. He endured the cross, despising the shame, but right now he's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Right now he's in the presence of the Father. Right now he, is, he has all power in his hands. Right now he's where he's supposed to be, but yet he kept running. My assignment is to tell you, keep going, keep running, keep doing what it is God has called you to do. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I'm preaching to you and telling you right now, keep going, keep running. Lift up your hands, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye every last door. The king of glory is coming in. Keep running. Keep your eyes forward. Don't stop. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't walk away. Don't do anything. But keep doing what God has assigned to your hands to do. Keep running. Even in uncertain moments, Jesus kept running. He didn't stop. Even in the face of hatred and persecution and being misunderstood and lied on and rejected, and even in the face of death, he kept going. He kept going because he knew if he finished the course, he would bring joy to me and you and joy and peace and a relationship with the Father to you and I. That's what he did. My assignment today is to tell you to keep going. Don't stop. Don't walk away. Hold on. Hallelujah. Praise his name. And I've made up in my mind, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep doing what it is Christ has called me to do. I'm, I'm going to keep doing it. I'm not going to let a momentary frustration defeat me. I'm not going to allow my flesh and its desires to defeat me I'm going on I'm going to finish the course I don't know who I'm preaching to today but you got to keep going I don't know who I'm preaching to but whoever you is you can't stop I know you've been thinking about walking away I know you've been thinking about quitting don't do it the spirit of God told me to tell you keep going keep running He's still with you. He hasn't forsaken you. You might feel like he's walked out, but he hasn't. He's still there. He still loves you. He sees you. He got his eyes on you. He just wants you to keep going. Maybe you haven't started the race yet. I want to invite you to meet the Lord Jesus and give your heart to him. Call that number. Hit that commit button. Email us. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ today. This is the right time, the right moment. Let's say it again. I'm 
not going back. Losing none. Hear to declare. My past is over. Hallelujah. All things are made new. Surrender my life. Oh, Lord.
Peace.